Right now on News 13 coverage you can count on after Tropical Storm Nestor's threats canceled a big marathon this weekend. We found out about another fun run that's happening tomorrow. Also, a March sheds light on domestic violence in the PD. We'll hear from a domestic violence survivor who shares her story. And later, we were there to see a local Army soldier reunite with his family and friends after serving in Iraq for nearly one year. News 13 starts right now. Coverage you can count on at 11 starts now. Well, good Saturday evening. I'm Hannah Rucker. Thanks for joining us for News 13 at 11's local coverage you can count on. Well, the remnants of Tropical Storm Nestor are just about ready to move on from our area, but we're not out of the clear just yet. Chief Meteorologist Frank Johnson is here now to tell us about the tornado threat for tonight. Hi, Frank. Hey, Hannah, so far that tornado threat has not developed. That is the good news, but we're still dealing with a lot of heavy rain across our area, and the chance for tornadoes is going to be the southern end of this area of rain, which is still south of Charleston. That warmer air in that air, south of Charleston may try to push northward tonight, so that's what we're going to be watching. But so far, we have not seen any severe storms. We, we're dealing with plenty of rain. In fact, a batch of heavier rain getting ready to push into the PD right now. That's what we're going to be dealing with overnight tonight, and here is that chance for severe weather, mainly along in east of I-95. Strongest closer to the coast, but so far, like I said, we have not seen any indication of tornadoes just yet. Just something that's a possibility as we head through the overnight hours. So we'll see those storms tonight through the overnight hours, clearing out for tomorrow, a nicer day on the way. I'll have more on tomorrow. Sunnier forecast coming up. Thank you, Frank. Tomorrow morning, a local running shop is hosting a No Way Nestor 13 mile fun run. This comes after the threat of the tropical storm Nestor canceled plans for Myrtle Beach's mini marathon. And News 13's very own Alicia Alonzo joins us live outside of Fleet Feet in Myrtle Beach with the details on the completely free event. Alicia. Hey, Hannah, store owners Paul and Kathy Rogers tell me that they're trying to make lemonade out of the sour weather that canceled the mini marathon. Now, marathon runners were given their T-shirts and medals for the canceled event, but Paul and Kathy wanted to give them an opportunity to cover the miles they've trained so hard for. They say many runners traveled across the country to run along the coast. And rain or shine, the owners are giving them that chance. The 13 mile fun run will have two groups, one starting at eight in the morning and the other at nine. Paul and Kathy tell me they aren't exactly sure how many runners are coming out, but they are fully prepared for the crowd. Uh, but this thing is blown up completely and it's just all over the place. It's and fantastic. we're just and we're just so excited just to you know kind of meet everybody um, and with Publix next door. Nobody's going to be thirsty or hungry. We're going to take care of things. Now the starting point will be right here tomorrow morning at Fleet Feet. Be sure to get here early enough to give yourself enough time to sign in before you take off. For more information on the event, you can head online to WBTW.com. For now, I'm live in Myrtle Beach for News 13. I'm Alicia Alonso. A lot of fun. Thank you, Alicia. New in your crime tracker tonight, police in Fairmont are searching for this person right here. Accused of breaking into a grocery store and stealing numerous cartons of cigarettes. Police say it happened early this morning at the Fresh Foods grocery store. If you have any information, you are asked to give police a call and you can take a longer look at this photo right now on WBTW.com. And new at 11, two people are recovering in the hospital after a rollover crash in the Myrtle Beach area. Horry County Fire Rescue says it happened around 8 tonight on North Kings Highway. The two people suffered non-life-threatening injuries and no word tonight on what led to this crash. And police in Conway are warning people of a phone scam in the area. The department says someone is impersonating police, reportedly asking people to send them money. Conway police says the agency would never call to ask for money. And if you live in Horry County, you might have gotten a surprise visit from a firefighter today. Horry County fire rescue teams were out and about today, knocking on doors and handing out free smoke alarms. It's all part of their quarterly smoke alarm blitz. You're watching Horry County Fire Rescue 2nd Battalion, who spent the day at the Myrtle Beach Travel Park. The firefighters covered all corners of the county to remind people about the importance of having working smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors. 
And in honor of Domestic Violence Awareness Month, the PD Coalition and House of Refuge held their seventh annual march in Darlington. News 13's Brianna Fernandez was in attendance and spoke to survivors on why this is so important to them. This is one of the things close to my heart. I was raised in a single parent home where there was domestic violence, but I am, we are survivors. We made it through. Shannon Johnson was in an abusive household. She knows all too well what it's like to not have a voice. Sometimes as women and men, we all go through different things, but there is help. And this is one way for us to let the community know and let everybody know that we support it and that we want to stop the domestic violence. Shannon and other domestic violence survivors and supporters gathered in Darlington for the seventh annual March to make their voices heard. We want to be able to provide as much service to them as much as we can. We are the voice of those victims. Yes. And I tell you, we do whatever we can to make a difference. And it takes the community working together to make that difference. Organizers tell us South Carolina is ranked fifth for the number of women killed by men. That's why this walk hits so close to home. Just about every day, there's some form of domestic violence that we have to help fight. Now the community wants to end domestic violence one step at a time. You know, a lot of times the drugs and alcohol are a big, are a big influence on it, um, but just let everybody know that there is help out there. In Darlington, for News 13, I'm Brianna Fernandez. Thank you, Brianna. New at 11, a Florence man is recovering tonight after authorities say his brother shot him. Deputies say it happened around 3 this morning on the corner of Honda Way and Highway 76. The man was shot in the shoulder after an argument with his brother at a nightclub. He is expected to be okay. The brother hasn't been arrested yet, but deputies plan on serving warrants soon. Count on News 13 for those updates. And we now know the name of the two people killed in last night's crash near Latta. The Dillon County Coroner says 18-year-old Christian Jones and 23-year-old Zipporah Leggett died after the crash, and they were both from Latta. Troopers say it happened on Highway 501 near Old Ebenezer Road outside of Latta just after 9 last night. Officials say Jones and Leggett were not wearing a seatbelt. Two other people in the car were also injured, and one of them was airlifted to the hospital. One of them was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Officials are investigating this crash. And new tonight, one person is dead after an early morning motorcycle crash in Florence County. It happened at around 4 a.m. on Paul John Jones Road. Um, while the driver was traveling from Highway 52, troopers say the motorcycle driver was taken to a hospital where they later died. Highway Patrol is investigating and count on News 13 for updates as we learn them. A local soldier safely made his way back to where he stationed in Fort Campbell, Kentucky in September, but he finally got his official welcome home in Conway today. News 13's Tori Gessner was there. Take a look. A second welcome home. This was amazing to see his face. Specialist James Bull walked hand in hand with his wife, kids, and mother after nine months in Iraq. A little bit of like separation anxiety and like overwhelmed because I haven't seen him for nine months. Nine months, Specialist Bull's family says was too long. It was miserable. Calling, trying to get him. Sometimes I couldn't get him on the phone, couldn't get him on the text, what's up app. But all, through it all, I thank God for allowing us to be able to endure all that. A local Blue Star mother of Coastal Carolina organized the flag line called Operation Welcome Home with help from a few veterans and military families. It's something the group tries to do every time a veteran or their families request it. It was just wonderful. I didn't realize it was going to be like this many people with this much support. thought it was just going to be a little small thing, but I was amazed with it. And I'm, so, I'm very proud of what all it did for me, and I appreciate everything. As for Specialist Bull, it was a proper welcome home. It felt just like the flight line all over again. Because, I mean, yes, I came home from Iraq in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, but this is my stumping ground. This is exactly where I'm from. So to get this same welcome back, it feels wonderful. In Conway, Tori Gessner, News 13. Thank you, Tori. And check this out. Business mogul and Shark Tank star Mark Cuban is giving $50,000 to a local domestic violence organization called the Family Just Justice Center of Georgetown and Horry Counties. Cuban says he plans to donate $10 million nationwide to raise awareness for domestic violence. And over on WBTW.com, we have reaction from the Family Justice Center after Cuban donated. And coming up, even though Nestor was downgraded from a tropical storm, it still didn't spare Florida from some tornado damage. We'll be right back with more coverage you can count on.
Welcome back to more local coverage you can count on. You're watching News 13 at 11. Nestor, no longer a tropical storm, is hammering Florida with at least two tornadoes being reported there. Hillary Lane has more. Tropical storm Nestor swept into Florida last night with high winds, surging storm waters, and drenching rains. Stormy conditions may travel dangerous. This stunning cell phone video captured fierce wind shoving a semi truck into this SUV. Eyewitnesses say it was a tornado. The drivers were not injured. It just sounded like a big old train coming. A fast moving tornado rocked this trailer park community in Seminole, Florida. Fierce winds up to 70 miles per hour took down power lines and damaged several homes. We jumped in the tub and just as we did, the carport came off and hit the pole behind my house. In low-lying St. Mark's, heavy rain caused streets and businesses to flood. Stanley West closed his cafe for the day to assess the damage and clean up. On this poll, he's marked the water level for each storm that's come through the area. The water came in. It, well, you can see the water mark. This is where it stopped, right about there in here. He knows it could have been much worse. Now that the storm has passed, how are you feeling? Uh, great, relieved, very much relieved. Uh, a lot less cleanup than I thought what I was going to have to do, and we just could put it back together and go back to work. You were taking a live look over the Myrtle Beach Boardwalk on this Saturday evening. Stay with News 13. We'll be right back. For next weekend. I know those runners made it clear they are running rain or shine, Frank, in the morning. Yeah, it, really, okay? it shouldn't be that bad. A few lingering showers, but not the torrential rain we've got overnight tonight and it will be clearing as the morning goes. That is good news. Thank mm -hmm. you, Frank. And coming up next in sports, controversy surrounds the Gamecocks' loss against the Gators, and the Shots come up short of their first conference win of the year against Georgia Southern. Derek has highlights and more next in sports. Here's Derek. He kind of felt a little bad for Chris out there today in Columbia. It was a rainy, rainy day, and it's also raining down in Statesboro. Tough loss for Coastal Carolina. They get so close to those Sunbelt wins, but can't quite push it over. Same thing for the Gamecocks, though, and they kind of held their own against the Gators. They At least did. it wasn't a complete domination It wasn't, there. And, and there was a lot of questionable officiating. Coach Muschamp was not happy in the postgame. He post -game. was stressed, <laughs> goodness, compared to last week's game. And it sounds like we're still keeping a look on things yes, tonight. Yes, rain's going to continue overnight tonight. We still have that risk for severe storms, but they have not materialized just yet. We're going to continue to watch it throughout the rest of the overnight hours. Alrighty, thank you for that, Frank. And thanks for joining us on News 13 this evening. Don't miss tomorrow morning's show right here on Channel 13.